and the brain <laughs> <Elder> <laughs> God on the porch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we're live. Good morning. So good morning. Good morning, Justin. Good morning, Marianne. Uh, welcome. Morning. Uh, great. I'm glad we're here together. Uh, we're, today we're talking about something exciting. Uh, well, maybe it's exciting to me, at least, uh, is uh, <laughs> internet connectivity and options and considerations. We're going to focus a bit on the home today because I think that's uh, more relevant. There's, I mean, this is like a topic of deep diving into technology of how businesses and different internet connectivities and resiliency and all that stuff. But today we're going to kind of talk about there's different options for the home, some difference between business option, business connectivity and home connectivity and uh, dive in there. But before we get to dive in deep, I just want to say thanks a lot for everybody for liking, subscribing. We're getting some great comments and some great questions on our site, on our YouTube playlist. Uh, more, more, more is great. We love it. Uh, any questions you have, that sort of thing. So, um, back to our kind of topic: internet connectivity. So, um, you know, I've been doing this a long time. So, is Justin and Mary? You've been doing it long enough now to remember like DSL and dial up. I mean, you know, what was the speed of dial up? Fifty six k when we were kind of coming into this I game. Think- K was the the last like fast end of it. I remember. I say uh, if you were lucky. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. I remember twenty four hundred baud modem uh, right. at my parents' house uh, right. on Prodigy. And <laughs> right, remember that first time we had that DSL modem in the house? That was like the yeah, exciting. it was amazing. Oh yeah. You know, you down, instead of downloading the picture, it was like. You know, you can, it, was like, it was like a pop. So it was really exciting. So, but you know, and it's, and unfortunately, I feel like it hasn't gone as fast as it could have, but now it's going to speed up again. I feel like hopefully there's some, some new technology coming down the pike. But, you know, back in the old days, the big decision making was what? DSL, which was based on copper uh, telephone technology mm-hmm. and uh, cable. And uh, then there's some new, new, new considerations out there. So uh, maybe let's get started by diving into the two different most common ways that people get connectivity to their home which mm-hmm. is uh, cable versus fiber. Mm-hmm. So what are the differences, how they work? And and actually, maybe we step back a second, Justin, and you give us a quick tutorial between home internet and business internet. Yeah, I mean, the, the technology tends to be pretty much the same between the two. The biggest difference between uh, like a home line and a business class line is uh, the SLA, the service level agreement from right. the provider. Really, when you look at what they offer for home, it'll always say up to whatever speed. And the idea there is that they are, they'll they'll cap you at a certain speed, but they're not guaranteeing any level of performance. It's best effort. Whereas a business line will have a certain type of SLA, depending on what you're getting, that says you're always going to get these specs. At the very least, it's going to be this. This is how you know the downtime windows are going to be like this, and uh, they treat it uh, differently. Uh, so it's easy if you are working, like if you have an internet line coming into your house and you're setting up a home office, you can talk to your provider and say, hey, can I upgrade to a business class line? And a lot of times it's not even hardware. It's just uh, a change on the back end to how they, they make it perform. Right. That makes sense. That makes sense. And, you know, and, and is it, and really what's the difference between, you know, cable versus fiber? That's kind of a, do you want to deep dive on that a little bit? Yeah. Um, the... Technology for for both of them are are different cables coming in, uh, obviously over a a copper cable line and fiber optics are coming in over fiber. There's some, uh, at some point, uh, as it moves further back, it it all ends up being fiber anyway, Uh, but that distribution towards the end is separate. And there's a few, at least in home setups, a few distinctions between the two. Generally with cable, uh, it's much faster and easier to get installed and set up. Uh, most residential areas are already wired for cable from TV going back to yeah. you know, right. 70s and 80s. And it's piggybacking off of that same setup. So even in an old building, an old house, there's you know those little... Uh, Oops, those little coax plugs, little right. yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, that can be used, leveraged for uh, for cable internet. Uh, the other big difference is the way that the speed is done. There's generally two speeds with uh, internet: the upload speed and the download speed. Download speed is you know how fast stuff comes in, and upload speed is how fast you send it out. And cable is much much faster to download than it is to upload. Right. In most mm-hmm. like home cases, that's fine because when you think about the things that you're doing, you're consuming, you're watching things, you're downloading things, you're mm-hmm. you're pulling stuff from the internet. Uh, in business uh, setups, you are sending lots of data out as well. So a lot of times you need that faster upload, especially if you're doing things like uh, connecting with a VPN or sending files out or even you know, video uh, chat. Right. Uh, 
because <laughs> fiber tends to be uh, the same. So if it's 100 <laughs> upload, it's also 100 download. Right. Whereas cable, a lot of times, is a, a perfect example. The speed I have on my connection now is 100 down and 10 up. So I can right. download much faster than I can upload. <laughs> Right, and I've, I know mine is I, I just recently upgraded it to a uh, to a more business focused one. You know, it's still a cable system. It's five hundred over fifty, but mm. we've never seen five hundred or fifty because it is overhead and the <laughs> system changes and that sort of thing. So, yeah. um, I know it's uh, so what, you know, and and so basically, you know, when you, you, you unfortunately uh, choices are based on your location as much as anything else, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, the two big well, providers. Go ahead, Marion. Sorry, I was gonna say. Well, I mean, we talked about the. The, the different speeds, the different availability, uh, but you're also making a decision based on the location. Cause yes, some places don't have fiber. I remember in my Brooklyn apartment, I was waiting, like I, it was, it was Time Warner cable at the time and that was it. Like, <laughs> so sometimes that is the problem, but then also, I mean, I see a comment coming in about money is a, is a huge factor mm -hmm. when you're deciding on home internet as well so it's as great from connie as fiber optic costs more than cable yeah. um it depends if you're doing a fiber optic cable for a business line undoubtedly also there's this concept called the last mile build out where you have to build the fiber to the premise but generally speaking the cable providers um the, the big fiber provider for home internet is uh and in, in, is here in the northeast is uh verizon fios and there's no mm -hmm. extra charge for that uh, file uh, files versus cable because it's considered the same class of service mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. from what i understand that some of the other more traditional um cable providers are building out a fiber infrastructure and that's going live within the next couple of months. Uh, mm -hmm. I just, as I said, I just upgraded my service and, and the uh, technician was explaining how they were starting to install that in other parts of the County. So it's kind of interesting. Um, but okay. no, it, so it's, it's, it doesn't, it, it doesn't cost more, but it's a, it's a much better technology. It's much more upgraded. Mm -hmm. um, and that's again on the consumer home. The consumer home is not, right. Mm -hmm. And um, then in business, is there a lot to do with the, um, it's a lot to do with the SLA and stuff like that, mm -hmm. or right. yeah. And I think there's an important distinction there too. It's if fiber is available in the building or the area that you're in, because a lot of times they'll be in like fiber will run or the cable or uh, whatever bread will run to a hub somewhere in an area. And like George mm -hmm. said, that last mile is where they connect it to the the building that you're in. And if you are, especially for businesses, if they're not already connected, a lot of times they'll charge you for that install and that can be expensive. Be expensive. So yeah. It's a one-time cost, but it's still a lot yeah. to put down. Yeah. 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 So that's uh, in mostly in a business scenario is where you're going to run into that for home, uh, like for like for Fios or uh, Google Fiber or uh, any of those other providers, they'll advertise that they're available when they're available. And that's it. It's just they bring it to a building and then it becomes available. They don't pass that cost on to, to consumers. Right. Yep, yeah. exactly. You know, and, and, and uh, it kind of gets to our next segment is like internet options available in outside of areas. You know, we, we tend to be focused mm -hmm. in here once again in New York. Uh, in, in, kind of in, in kind of New York Metro, and you know, there's kind of like minimal amounts of options, but it's very well connected. And then in terms of like there's there's connectivity almost everywhere. But mm -hmm. if you're living anywhere within and addressing you where you are right now, your yeah. undisclosed, <laughs> undisclosed location. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we yeah. Uh, yeah, we got a cable line uh, up here uh, at the place that I'm at. Uh, maybe a few years ago, before that, uh, it was uh, at one point that we were using satellite, uh, and right. another point we were just using uh, uh, 4G off of uh, tethering off of uh, phones. And actually, I think there is uh, part of the phone service in uh, like the regular dial phone service is really piggybacking off of the 4G. It's a 4G right. modem with a Wi-Fi in it, and then just phones that connect to it. Right, mm -hmm. right, and so, and, that, and especially like in these more rural or less densely populated areas, mm -hmm. there's very little connectivity options available. A satellite yeah. is the only one. So, and, yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, I grew up in Dutchess County, New York. So when you were like in New York, I was like, you mean New York City? <laughs> um, but yeah, I grew up in Dutchess yep. County, and where I was growing up, uh, you know, after the 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 dial and AOL stuff, we had to get. Uh, basically, it was it was satellite. Right. internet and if it's stormy you know that could affect it but the truth is there was a lot of space out there so it was very easy to install just need a a view of the southern skies and That's right uh, it was actually yep. much it 
at the time, it was a great upgrade for us. Um, right. So if that's all, if that's all you can get, you know, that it definitely works and it's convenient. But mm -hmm. um, yeah. luckily, my my small town got got Fios. So <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah, it, it, it massive difference. I mean, in terms of like remote work and capabilities, especially mm -hmm. we see it now with the current situation, um, and people who you know, if you the, the massive difference between a ten meg line versus a hundred meg line. Is the difference between yeah. working and not working, and yeah. you know, and what's interesting is how many rural areas don't have connectivity, and people started doing all sorts of things besides satellite to do their own, mm -hmm. um, their own kind of build out of different like microwave options and some kind of like uh, almost like a, almost like a Grange kind of vibe. But it's really fascinating stuff out there on it, so it's really cool. Yeah, but, yeah um, the community is getting together to make sure right. uh, that they can get that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. right. But if you don't have that sort of community, you can absolutely look up and see what high speed internet is. Available available in your area right. um, yeah. almost uh i mean almost everywhere as long as you like so as long as you have a view of the sky you can do satellite satellite is much faster download than it is upload similar to, to cable so it's mm -hmm. very good for uh like consuming and, and home things uh for for work if you're vpning uh, it's not super great for that right. uh, but there are other ways to to utilize it uh, and to make use of it uh, and then yeah 4g and eventually 5g is becoming That's right. pretty ubiquitous and in a lot of cases especially in in more rural areas that's where the money is going into the infrastructure because it's a lot easier for uh the telecoms to build a tower and cover a large area than to run physical cable and mm -hmm. the uh to, and that's the you know the same connection you'd use on a on a cell phone. You can get uh, either it's called a, a tethering, where you connect your phone to a, a computer, or you can get a, a physical modem that connects to that and has a wire that you plug in. And right. those are both good options. Yeah, fixed a fixed wireless access point is pretty. It's pretty great. So you can use that. And so, oh, we have an, we have another from Robert Pinchina. Uh, oh. <laughs> is the speed of fiber uh, and cable ultimately dependent on the speed of your home wireless setup? Is wired at home better than wireless in terms of speed? That is a great question, and we're going to yeah. jump right in that. And so, and the answer is um, that they're, they're kind of independent from one another. Um, there's a, there's the speed of the internet from the, from like basically the cable box or from the provider, and then there's the in, inside the speed of the the connectivity inside the house or inside the premise, I should say. So um, wired is always going to be faster. Mm -hmm. than wireless at least at this point yeah uh, mm -hmm. and well and also the the idea behind that is at wired you're getting the most speed that you are able to get right. so when you're wired you're not losing anything that that the wireless does so wireless can't go faster than wired because wired is your modem it's going straight there and wireless mm -hmm. can be a little bit less depending on um you know what your wireless mm -hmm. access points are um, right. but also just the nature of wireless that you it might just not be as as fast. It's right. It, it's it's. Pro I mean, exactly. And we covered a little bit of that in some of early episodes. But and and but once again, uh, with some articles on. But but basically, you know, there's so many factors in why wireless is low, slower, fast, and mm -hmm. can, and um, we could definitely uh, yeah. deep dive on that one again mm -hmm. of, of some of the things. So um, and we have two more two more comments from Connie again. Thank you, Connie. We appreciate <laughs> it. Um, so connect VPN at work and staying connected. A lot. Of, it depends of the. Staying connected with the VPN could be a factor of the connectivity you're on in terms of the mm -hmm. stability of the cable modem connection and stability to the um, to the uh, uh, your your actual device. Are you connecting to your? You know, if you think about it uh, in terms of segments, you have your device and you're connecting a VPN to a wireless access point, but it's connecting to the wireless modem, and then it's getting to your VPN to the through the cloud. Um, I would highly recommend connecting it via physical cable to the Cable mm -hmm. modem directly or onto your onto your router, um, mm -hmm. so that you can. Um, yes, that's exactly right. Yes, do you mean yeah. wired? Exactly, Ethernet cable directly into the cable modem. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the factors in cable modems too that we we're going to get to we were, we were in our next segment, but um, cable modems do change the specs over time, and they've much improved in some different in some newer hardware. And um, I we always recommend. If you've had your cable modem for more than two years or three years, definitely worth calling your cable company and getting either an upgrade. Or now mm -hmm. I know many cable companies allow you to buy your own router to save some cost. Mm -hmm. So that's, that can get pretty complicated, and that's way down. Yeah, I, I, like I, we're yeah. not going to go down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're getting yeah. equipment from your yeah. from your ISP. Stay with them. 
always worth uh, giving them a call <laughs> and Sorry. saying, hey, hey what, yeah, no, I... no, totally. But it's, it's definitely worth looking into. <laughs> it's, it's but worth, yeah. it's, the it's easiest giving them a call just to say, yeah. am I eligible for an upgrade? And a lot of times, too, if you've had the same account for a long time, you're getting uh, maybe paying a, you know, a rate for a slower connection than what you could be getting if you had new yeah. equipment. And sometimes it's just a phone call and they say, yeah, we could send you a new, a new box and you get faster internet. So it's always yeah. worth checking out. And we have another question from the, from Mr. Stefan Kapp, as who is always a loyal subscriber. Thank you very much, Stefan. Um, is there any truth to chatter that providers are throttling back data services due to high demands from work, work from home overloads? If you're a good service, will that actually help in these times? That's, that's a, you know, there's a lot of conjecture on that. It's mm -hmm. it's unclear if they're throttling back or not throttling back. It's very hard to consistently test because of this the factors of how cable modems, especially cable modems, uh, the variability yeah. and the speed. One of the things that was big a few years ago and that uh, that the, one of the rules that changed was around uh, what's called net neutrality. And the okay. idea was that up until a few years ago, the all of the internet providers were required to treat all traffic the same. So any, any data that went across, they weren't allowed to say, this is faster, this is slower. It was just everything was pushed as fast as they could do. A few years ago, that changed, and that's when we started to see things like uh, getting free Netflix with your uh, mobile device that didn't count against your data, because what they were saying is that this data we're treating differently. So now there's uh, a, it's technically legal, and they can adjust how data is flowing, and like George said, there's really no way to know for certain. You can, you can pretty much guarantee that when the network is under strain, they're going to be doing something to optimize it as best that they can. Correct. And what we're seeing as well is a lot on the other end, uh, providers like Netflix and uh, and YouTube voluntarily throttling their settings and saying, we're going to set our stuff not at HD to start so that they don't get throttled by the the, uh, the internet providers so that the right. traffic is is less and, and makes a, a a better connection. It's it's mm -hmm. such a high. It's a very. It's such a. It, you know, when you start getting uh, diving, uh, pulling back the layers, it's actually very complex of mm -hmm. kind of managing this, this massive network. If you think with the number of nodes on it, switches, <laughs> yes. fire routers, firewalls, egresses, ingresses, you know, routing tables. It's it's. it's a I lot. mean, I think one of the best. Uh, if you if you want to visualize it, if you've ever been like on a Greyhound bus and you're all sharing. Uh, the internet one person's watching netflix and now everyone's internet is slow you know so think about <laughs> yeah, that, right. there's a difference between like usage making it like if you have a shared connection and that's being a problem and like the cable company or netflix itself saying you can only get this much speed on netflix so right. Uh, bring that back to uh, to Connie's question about the VPN connectivity to uh, to the office. When you look at like connecting to cloud services like Microsoft or or Google or or uh, AWS or things like that, the, those services have a lot of connections to the internet and very bit fast connections to the internet and spread around. The office only has one or two, and the path between your home connection and that office connection, even if that last mile, like we we're talking about, is very, very fast, if whatever is happening in between has a problem, it's called a, a peering issue, uh, you can have a bad connection over right. the VPN. Mm -hmm. uh, this is going back some years, but I remember we had a, a client at one point that, for whatever reason, anyone that had uh, optimum at home or cable vision at home in the city could not vpn into their office just wouldn't work they right. switched it over to naming uh, names yeah <laughs> whichever one it was they've been replaced sure. and they don't exist the the uh, isp isn't around anymore so yes the, but whatever there just was a, some issue that was going on and it fixed itself eventually but they're just those users couldn't connect in and there was no way to troubleshoot or fix that because it's uh endpoint to endpoint and the connection right. to the internet is fine and it's just those specific connections right and then you start getting into the uh you start getting into network detective fast facets of, mm -hmm. of trying to understand like the route path and all that stuff and you know just and VPN connections by nature are very difficult to understand their pathing due to the encryption on them so anyway that's a great question so what uh i think so the uh, next piece is just a little bit, uh, I'm just kind of go back to, or talking about that upgrading your hardware for your cable modem, mm -hmm. super important, give a call, um, vastly different um, standards. It's great. Um, Same goes for your wireless router. Yes. Uh, if you are using separate, I mean, some of them nowadays, cable modems usually come with the wireless capabilities. Um, 
But if you're using a separate one, those might be very old. I know, I mean, for money's sake, I used an old Apple Airport for way too long. Um, <laughs> and true. when I upgraded, it was significantly better. And it, even just like the fact that multiple people could be Netflixing at the same time with no problem, mm -hmm. like that right. sort of thing. Right, so exactly. If you're and using the if same you're... dusty one that you've been using, get an upgrade. Yeah. So if, you're, if you're having uh, difficulty connecting to things at home, the uh, the basic steps that you should take first, plug in, wire it in, see if that makes it better. If it does, mm -hmm. you know the problem is you're wireless and you can replace that or upgrade that or work on that. If you're wired in and you're still having a problem connecting to something at that point, call your internet provider and say, hey, uh, am I eligible for any upgrades? What's available? Uh, are there new hardware new hardware that I can get? Correct, and also there may be, an, there may be issues outside your premise that could be affecting you. I know in my house mm -hmm. here, uh, we had an issue with the, with the node that's across the street from my house, where mm -hmm. finally, after like multiple outages and complaints of speed, and uh, we came home one day and it was a shiny new network <laughs> node out there and, it, and everything's been, no, Talk not good. Yeah, yeah. No. So basically, you know, I guess we weren't the only ones complaining about it and they saw, you know, they saw the jitter and the trouble on the network. So, I mean, there may be, you know, that's why it's always important to like, can contact the provider and exactly. you know instead of, you shouldn't like suffer with it it should always be like hey i'm having issues here i know it's right now to have a tons of service issues with some people working from home but it's definitely worth like submitting a request and putting mm -hmm. say hey do mm -hmm. i have issues here and test it because it maybe it could be like so many different factors but as Justin said yeah that's definitely definitely start with the provider side mm -hmm. So sorry, Jess, I've interrupted you. We're no, that, that was that was it. <laughs> yeah. 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 That was that was pretty yeah. much it. Was was that is that sometimes you know you're eligible for for an upgrade or new hardware and that can fix mm -hmm. things. And if you're right. not, like George said, you're submitting a ticket and letting them know. At least they know they get enough of them. Somebody is going to uh, eventually. Uh, be able to fix something uh, mm -hmm. if, if they can up the line. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, network issues is just 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 supporting it for years. Is network issues are very can be very transient and very difficult to, to pin down. Mm -hmm. So you have to. So if you ever if you're seeing yourself having the same issues over and over again, it's good to, if you can note down the condition that you find yourself in. Like, am I am I I'm trying to work with my VPN into this specific service or using this specific at this specific time because it gives it gives it give, you know if they have to escalate the problem past the first level it'll be the information required for the um for the engineering their you know mm -hmm. higher level engineering team to help you or your it provider to at least be your um advocate that's what some of these we do a lot for our clients is sometimes mm -hmm. like we would never make someone try to talk to a high level network engineer at a yeah. oh yeah <laughs> We don't even we don't even like talking to them. So no. No, yeah, well, they're very sometimes nice. Sometimes we act as the geeks English translator. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> actually, actually, your Marian does a very good That's, job, right? As, as Marian, yeah. Marian has that she wears that role. Justin, yeah. I kind of dive. Uh, hang on, let me change my name down. Here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get, you know, I I've, I've been, I get in trouble a lot for these talks. I'm like, hey, stop that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, Matt had to give us a uh, a warning ahead of time. Don't get yes. technical because yes. George and I were going off the deep end. <laughs> it, when is it a real? Yeah, it's, it's good to. See see things that you're passionate about yeah so. I get, yeah i don't have doctors modems oh, i said it yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um anyway uh do you guys think this is good these uh, kind of covers the yeah. topic you know I what we got one more comment just asking oh. and this is oh, something sure. that's very popular a lot of people are uh advertising oh, yeah. wireless extenders mm -hmm. um i actually don't know too much about that i just know that whenever i bring it up a network engineer goes oh yeah so, so, so tell me what I that reaction is <laughs> wireless extender is that you've got your wireless network and it reaches a certain distance and then that's it. So you get a, a device that you plug into just power, connect to your wireless and it connects it connects to the existing wireless and then makes more wireless. The problem with them is that just like everything else, everything that you connect to a wireless network decreases the speed that everything else gets. So you're, it's always going to slow down the speed when you connect to it. What you can do uh, is uh, get more things wired, or if you can get a, a long enough cable and to run not necessarily all the way to where you need to be, but far enough that you can put in another wireless access point uh, or another wireless router, and then you can use that to uh, to extend. 
the, uh, the other option. No, sorry, mm -hmm. Justin. No, I, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, I, I, I get very excited with these. I think these are, yeah. I think these are great. I think it's such a, you know compared to like what we had to do in, in um, it's, it's called a mesh network. Basically, mm -hmm. what it does is it's a wireless access point with multiple radios in it, and it uses a set of radios for contacting the other wireless access points, and it builds a, a full mesh. Now, I'm sure Gene is watching this, and he's mm -hmm. telling, and he's like. So and if you're, he has a great article he's putting together about a lot of technology behind this. So please gotta look out for our blog post around it. Uh, our, our own Jimmy Murray spent a lot of time on this. I read it. I read part of it. Yeah. It's deep dive. It's really good. It's yeah. really smart though. It's but the, the big distinction between an extender and a mesh network is that right. when you do the mesh network, most times all of the pieces come together and they're pre-configured right. to work together. So if like uh, uh uh, Google Home, Google has one. Uh, Arrow has one. Arrow. There's a, a bunch of others. And the yeah. idea is that you'll buy three devices. You plug one or two or all three of them in, but you have uh, and they're pre-configured to work together. The yeah. off-the-shelf, uh, I'm just going to buy this at the store network extender. Your mileage may vary. Yeah, yeah. I would say for this. Uh, so. Oh, oh sorry, I was just gonna say, like, as a as a as an idea, we don't prefer netex the the extenders. Um, they might work; they they can work, but it's it is reducing. It's just taking another piece of the pie, and it is making a little bit more degradation as you move on. So the easiest thing I think it, mesh networking takes a call to your IT provider. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think the easiest thing is if you can get a long enough cable, mm -hmm. um, just put up a second access point on the same network. Um, usually, if you if you know the the your access point, your router manufacturer, there's usually instructions on there. Um, it's very similar to the how to change your Wi-Fi password. It's in that same thing, yep. uh, and that's what we did in my Brooklyn apartment. I had a very long apartment to save space. It was it was like <laughs> ten feet wide and then very very long. So right. we had to run a hundred foot cable from yep. the modem to a second access point to make sure we yep. have depending on the access point that you have to you and how it comes in if you've got a if it's a separate device from the modem and you've got your cable a lot of times the cable comes in by the by your tv because that's where the cable box is mm -hmm. right and if you're you know by the tv everything is plugged in and wired and you're trying to get internet you know down the other end you can take the existing wireless uh router that you have get a long cable and move it and place it somewhere where you get better coverage. You don't always need to buy something additional. And sometimes it's just the placement of that device. So that's, that's true. Uh, a good thing to, to test and, and work out too. Mm, yeah, so that makes me think of like a blog post about not stuffing your router underneath a million books just because yeah. it's prettier. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you don't want to hide it. It's definitely, it's a radio. It's kind of a donut. It's on stuff. So, um, <laughs> We got, we got, so with that in mind, uh, that's a great another blog. That's a great another video post about placing wireless and kind of we'll, maybe we'll do some different stuff about that. That's and a um, gene special. Yeah, yeah, that's a gene special. <laughs> then we'll come right back for a little deeper dive. Mm -hmm. And so you know, once again, like, like many technology things, this is just balancing. You know what you what's affordable, what's what's mm -hmm. available, and what your needs are. So um, there's definitely some uh, places to do some research and reviews. Um, just take a look. And once again, if you have any questions, this fire month, the Valiant team, we'd love to answer questions like that about mm -hmm. this sort of stuff. And uh, as always, please mm -hmm. like and subscribe. We really appreciate mm -hmm. it. I thank you guys. It was so great having you on to, uh, working yeah, today with everybody. you. I get excited about this. And uh, Friday's going to be a special day. Very exciting. We have our, our, our next Valianter. I don't know what we call ourselves. It's yeah. Valianter, yeah. Valianter, I think, is okay. That works. Um, Valianter. Valianter. Uh, <laughs> 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 anyway, um, so uh, you know, uh, Mike West, and he's put together some uh, – basically, he did uh, one blog post on some favorite apps on the Mac OS platform. Uh, and one he's doing on Chrome extensions, and uh, we're just gonna go through it with Mike. He's a great, personable guy. I think you get a lot out of it. Um, mm -hmm. Just kind of check it out, and I hope uh, everyone watches it. All right, Excellent. yeah, make your life easier with apps, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> If you've got oh. questions on apps or if you've got some suggestions of your favorite apps. Send them, oh, yeah. Send them Let us over. know your yeah. favorite apps. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Please put them in the comment. And that's right. Thank you, Matt. Submit a question at our website. The bit.ly right there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Very good. Awesome. Thanks. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks See you everybody. Later. Bye now. See you. Bye-bye.